always so you don't see, you see some more than black screen. Hello, Facebook. Hello to my Facebook audience. And there's Periscope. All right. We're going to dive right in. I know it's Super Bowl Sunday. We're going to dive right in. All right. So let's start with a word of prayer. Thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you for this opportunity, Lord, to disseminate your word. Thank you for the opportunity to be found in the service of God. For there is no greater privilege, O oh God, than to spend our lives serving you. Uh, speak through my mouth. I give you my brain, my lips, my mind, my heart, every part of me. I surrender it to your Holy Spirit, O oh God, that you might speak through me, that you might get the glory in all things, that what you want to be said will be said, so that you might be glorified, and the saints will be edified, and the demons will be terrified. We thank you for it, we believe you for it, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen and amen. All right. <clears throat> now, uh, I'm going to give you a lot of information. I know I say that every week, but it's true every week. I'm going to give you a lot of information, so you're going to have to watch this video more than once to get everything I have to say. Okay? So let's start with my tagline. What's my tagline? Here it is. God already told you what was going to happen if you would just listen to the prophets. One more time. God already told you what was going to happen if you would just listen to the prophets. Okay? So, again, welcome to all my audiences. Welcome to my Facebook Live audience. Those of you that are watching me live, welcome to my Periscope audience. Those of you that are watching live and the replay, and welcome to my YouTube audience, those of you that are checking me out on YouTube. Please like and share this video. My goal is always to get the Word of God to millions of people, because whenever a prophetic word goes forth, the prophetic word is designed to change nations. You can't find anywhere in the Bible where when a prophet went forth, it didn't change, didn't change anything. Change the city, change the king, change the nation, change the world. So when the prophetic word goes, goes forth, we want to share that as many places as we can. So please like and share this video. If you want to sow into my ministry, uh, Matthew 10, 41, whoever receives a prophet, because he is a prophet, will receive a prophet's reward. So I have a PayPal.me link on my Facebook Live, Periscope, and Twitter feed, and Amazon, Amazon Smile, my PDT, NFP, 501c3 is tax, tax deductible. All those links are on my profiles, Okay. How you find me is I always hashtag everything I do with hashtag PDT. So that's how you can always find me online. Just look up hashtag PDT on YouTube, Facebook, anywhere. That's me. I'm live on Facebook and Periscope now every Sunday, 2.30 p.m. Central Standard Time. And on the second Thursday of every month, I do a series called No More Genies, where we talk about getting rid of our genie concept of God. So that's coming up on the second Thursday of this month. Okay? All right. We've got to dive right in. Now, I have a very long scripture to read for you today. The prophetic word for today is step up. Step up. Step up. That's the prophetic word for today. Now, I have a very long scripture to read for you today. It's really, really long. Uh, so I want to get right to it. It is 1 Samuel chapter 17. That's a chapter, <coughs> excuse me, that's a chapter about David and Goliath. Okay, 1 Samuel chapter 17. Samuel was the last of the prophets that led Israel. Okay, Moses was the prophet that led Israel out of Egypt. And in between Moses, they had uh, judges. And then they had one more prophet before they switched to the monarchy. Samuel was the last national prophet of Israel. Then they switched to the monarchy with King Saul. Okay, just to give you just brief background on who Samuel was. Samuel was also a, uh, a bit of a miracle baby because his mother was named Hannah and she was in a polygamous relationship. She was uh, one wife to, uh, I believe her husband's name was Elkanah, and his other wife, Penina, was just having baby after baby and Hannah was barren. So Hannah went and prayed to the Lord and asked him to give her a baby. And the Lord said, I'm trying to send a prophet into the earth, so you must commit yourself to give him back to me. And when Hannah said yes, that's when God gave her Samuel. That's how Samuel came into the world, okay? 1 Samuel chapter 17, I'm reading, reading out of the King James Version. Now the Philistines gathered together their armies to battle and were gathered together at Shokok, which belonged to Judah, and pitched between Shokok and Azekah and Ephes Damim. And Saul and the men of Israel were gathered together and pitched by the valley of Elah and set, set the battle in array against the Philistines. Philistines stood on a mountain on the one side, and Israel stood on a mountain on the other side, and there was a valley between them. There went out a champion out of the camp of the Philistines named Goliath of Gath, 
whose height was six cubits in a span. That's roughly nine feet, roughly nine feet tall. He had a helmet of brass upon his head. He was armed with a coat of mail, and the weight of the coat was 5,000 shekels of brass. And he had greaves of brass upon his legs and a target of brass between his shoulders. And the staff of his spear was like a weaver's beam. That means it was thick like a, a support beam for a house. And his spear's head weighed 600 shekels of iron, and one bearing a shield went before him. Do you want to know why Goliath was so strong? Is because he was defended, he was, excuse me, descended from the Nephilim. He was part of the human angel hybrid babies that happened in the days of Noah. Because angels left heaven and had babies by human women. Goliath comes from that line. That's why he was so big and so strong and had all this, this uh, about him. And he stood and cried unto the armies of Israel, and on verse 8, and said unto them, Why are you come out to set your battle in array? Am I not a Philistine, and ye servants to Saul? Choose your man for you, let him come down to me. If he be able to fight with me and to kill me, then we will be your servants. But if I prevail against him and kill him, then shall ye be our servants and serve us. And the Philistines said, I defy the armies of Israel this day. Give me a man that we may fight together. <clears throat> When Saul and all Israel heard those words of the Philistine, they were dismayed and greatly afraid. Now David was a son of that Ephrathite of Bethlehem Judah, whose name was Jesse, and he had eight sons. And the man went among men for an old man in the days of Saul. <clears throat> and the three eldest sons of Jesse went and followed Saul to the battle. And the names of his three sons that went to the battle were Eliab, the firstborn, next unto him Abinadab, and the third Shammah. And David was the youngest, and the three eldest followed Saul. But David went and returned from Saul to feed his father's sheep at Bethlehem. And the Philistine drew near morning and evening and presented himself forty days. Jesse said unto David his son, Take now for thy brother an ephah of this parched corn and these ten loaves, and run to the camp of thy brethren, and carry these ten cheeses unto the captain of their thousand, and look how thy brethren fare, and take their pledge. So David was bringing them food, parched corn, loaves of bread, and some cheese. <clears throat> proteins and starch. <laughs> and David rose up early in the morning and left the sheep with the keeper and took and went. As Jesse had commanded him, and he came to the trench as the host was going forth to the fight, shouted for the battle. For Israel and the Philistines had put the battle in array, army against army, so they were clashing down off the mountain. David left his carriage in the hand of the keeper of the carriage and ran into the army and came and saluted his brethren. And as he talked to them, as he talked with them, behold, there came up the champion, the Philistine of Gath, Goliath by name out of the armies of the Philistines, and spake according to the same words. And David heard him. And all the men of Israel, when they saw the man, fled from him. They ran, for they were sore afraid. And the men of Israel said, Have you not seen this man that has come up? Surely to defy Israel is he come up, and it shall be that the man who kills him, the king will enrich him with great riches, and will give him his daughter, and make his father's house free in Israel. What just happened? <clears throat> they said, Whoever kills Goliath, King Saul is going to give him a lot of money. You get to marry the king's daughter, which means you become kind of part of the royal court because you married a princess, and your father is going to be tax-free. No more debt, no more servitude, nothing. Okay? Quite a prize. David spoke to the men that stood by him, saying, What shall be done to the man that killed this Philistine and take away the, the reproach from Israel? For who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? And the people answered him after this manner, saying, So shall it be done to the man that killeth him. So I'm going to skip uh, over that. Verse 32, And David said to Saul, Let no man's heart fail because of him. Thy servant will go and fight with this Philistine. Saul said to David, Thou art not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him, for thou art but a youth, and he a man of war from his youth. So that David talks about the sheep and the bear. David said unto Saul, Thy servant kept his father's sheep, and there came a lion and a bear, and took a lamb out of the flock. And I went out after him, and smote him, and delivered it out of his mouth. And when he arose against me, I caught him by his beard, and smote him, and slew him. Thy servant slew both the lion and the bear, and this uncircumcised Philistine shall be as one of them, seeing he hath defied the armies of the living God. David is bold. David said, Moreover, the Lord that delivered me out of the paw of the lion, and out of the paw of the bear... He will deliver me out of the hand of this Philistine. And Saul said unto David, Go, and the Lord be with thee. Okay? And David took his staff in his hand and chose him five smooth stones out of the brook and put them in a shepherd's bag, which he had even in a scrip. And, in his, sling was, and his sling was in his hand, and he drew near to the Philistine. 
And the Philistine came on and drew near unto David, and the man that bare the shield went before him. And the Philistine looked about, he saw David, he disdained him, for he's but a youth and ruddy and of a fair countenance. In other words, he's a bit of a pretty boy. He's kind of rough around the edges, but he's a little bit of a pretty boy. And the Philistine said unto David, Am I a dog that you come to me with staves? And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. And the Philistine said to David, Come to me, and I will give thy flesh unto the fowls of the air and to the beasts of the field. Then said David to the Philistine, Thou comest to me with a sword and with a spear and with a shield, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defied. This day will the Lord deliver thee into my hand. I will smite thee and take thine head from thee, and I will give the carcasses of the host of the Philistines this day into the fowls of the air and to the wild beasts of the earth, that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. And all this assembly shall know that the Lord saved it not with sword and spear, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will give you into our hands. And it came to pass when the Philistine arose and came and drew nigh to meet David, that David hastened and ran toward the army to meet the Philistine. And David put his hand in his bag and took a stone and slang it and smote the Philistine in his forehead, that the stone sunk into his forehead, and he fell upon his face to the earth. So David prevailed over the Philistine with a sling and with a stone, and smote the Philistine, and slew him, but there was no sword in the hand of David. Therefore David ran and stood upon the Philistine, and took his sword, and drew it out of the sheath thereof, and slew him, and cut off his head therewith. And when the Philistines saw their champion was dead, they fled. All right, that's a lot of reading. That's actually verses 1 to 51. I didn't read all of them, but those of you that are familiar with the story of David and Goliath, you actually need to read it. So today's prophetic word is step up. So what is it that the Lord wants us to get out of those verses. Here it is. Um, and the Lord was talking to me uh, about this this morning in church. He was saying that a lot of his children are waiting on him to move. Those of you that have been seeking God and pressing in on God and believing God, <clears throat> you've been waiting on the Lord to move on something. But the Lord is trying to tell you he's waiting on you to move. You've got to step up. Now the world calls a change in status a glow up and a glow up is when you're shiny now where you know you got better clothes you're in a better situation got some more resources you kind of turn your life up that's a glow up but the word says we need to step up because you have to do something a glow up describes the results step up describes the process one more time a glow up describes the results. That's why everybody likes it, because everybody wants to glow up. Everybody wants to be better next year, blah, blah, blah. But a step up describes the actual process. And what the Lord was showing me is that we are not waiting on God to move. God has already released uh, his grace, the open doors, his favor, open heavens. What you need to understand from this story is that Goliath challenged the armies of Israel for 40 days that's over a month. That's a month in like 10 days or nine days, depending on, you know, how many days is in the month. For over a month, that means he would still be challenging them now. Like all of January and all the rest of this week, Goliath was going out laughing at the armies of Israel, cursing them in the name of his gods. And they were so afraid of him, they didn't do anything. Then King David comes on the scene and his original purpose was just to bring some food to his brothers. Once he got there, David was like, who is this guy? <laughs> who is this Philistine to defy the armies of the living God? And David said, I'll slay him. I'll kill him. And Saul was like, how can you kill him? And David said, because uh, when I was tending the sheep, I went up against a lion and a bear. And God delivered the lion and the bear in my hand. David said, I actually grabbed them by their beard and killed them. Now, I want you to picture that. I want you to picture a 17-year-old boy Grabbing a lion's beard. Oh, <laughs> okay. And I want you to picture a 70 year old boy taking out a bear. David was somebody, okay. And so he took his staff in his hand and chose five smooth stones. And Goliath ran out and David ran to meet him. But I want you to know what, notice what David did. David said in verses 45 and 46 and 47. He declared what he was about to do. Let me read that again. Then David said to the Philistine, Thou comest to me with a sword and with a spear and with a shield, but I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts, 
the God of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defied. This day will the Lord deliver thee into mine hand, and I will smite thee and take thine head from thee. And I will give the carcasses of the host of the Philistines this day unto the fowls of the air and to the wild beasts of the earth, that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. And all this assembly shall know that the Lord saveth not with sword and spear, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will give you into our hands. Oh, Lord, there's so much in those verses, but I want you to notice that David said it. He said what he was going to do before he did it. And what the Holy Ghost wanted me to say is, do you have the courage to be that bold? Do you have the courage to say, do you remember when President Obama ran for president? He said, I'm going to be president. And when he when he's, uh, was running against John McCain, he said, yeah, next month when I beat John McCain for the presidency. Do you remember that? He said it, okay, because he was bold enough to declare what he was going to do. King David declared what he was going to do in detail. Okay, he said, I'll come to you in the name of the Lord. You can't defile the armies of Israel. God's going to deliver you in my hand. I'm going to smite you. I'm going to cut your head off. I'm going to feed your carcass and the carcasses to the birds and the wild beasts. And they'll know there's a God in Israel. And they'll know that God doesn't save with a sword and spirit. David said a lot. He declared it before he fought. And what the Holy Ghost is telling me to tell you is that do you have the boldness to say, Whatever it is that you want, next year, by this time next year, I'm going to be a millionaire. By this time next year, I'm going to have graduated with my degree. <clears throat> by this time next year, I'm going to be married to the person of my dreams. By this time next year, I'm going to be out of debt. Or you can say it today. You can say in 30 days, I'm going to be out of debt. Okay? You can say this month, this is Black History Month, but also Valentine's Day. You say, I'm going to meet the person of my dreams this month. Do you have the boldness to step up and declare what it is God has promised you and what it is that you want. Why is that so important? Because in this story, I want to remind you that Goliath went out there against them for over a month. God had already given them the victory, the Lord's with them, but then men didn't step up. So Goliath just went back and forth, cursing them, scaring them, making them run away, and they didn't get the victory because they were scared of Goliath. Same God, same, same, same favor, same power, same everything, but they didn't have enough faith to step up. Then here comes David. And David had confidence in God because of his prior experience. He said, I've already fought a lion, and God delivered him into my hand. And I've already fought a bear, and God delivered him into my hand. So who is this guy? Who is this uncir uncircumcised heathen to defy the armies of the living God? So what you need to do is you need to receive what David is saying and catch this spirit of boldness and step up. Whatever it is that you want to do, if you want to run for office, you can say, by this time next year, I'm going to be a U.S. Senator, or I'm going to be a state senator. Do you have enough boldness to declare it? That's the thing. And then, after you declare it, what did he do? He put some works behind his faith. He didn't just say it. He said it first. Then he ran out to meet Goliath, and then he threw the stone, and what happened? The stone hit Goliath in the forehead, and then the Bible says it sunk into his forehead, and Goliath fell flat on the ground. You know what happened? God pushed the stone into his head. Do you know why? Because you can't sling a stone hard enough to sink, to cut through somebody's skull and sink into their forehead and their brain. No matter how hard, that's a bullet. A bullet could do that, but you can't throw a stone as hard as a gun could fire a bullet. Now, if Goliath had, if David had shot a bullet in Goliath's head, then yeah, that could have penetrated his skull. But you cannot not actually throw a stone with your hand in a slingshot hard enough to crush through somebody's skull. How did that stone get into Goliath's skull? I'll tell you how. Because the Lord gave it a push. That's how that stone got embedded in Goliath's forehead. And that's what killed him. And then David ran up and cut off his head with his own sword. So what's the point there? The point there is that when you throw your stone, God's going to give it a push. One more time. When you throw your stone, God's going to give it a push. But that means you got to step up and do your thing, whatever it is that you got to, whatever it is that you do. Like if you want to run for office, you got to make them pamphlets. You got to, you know, go on the road. You got to stump. You got to meet the people. You got to shake hands. You got to get in the race. You got to throw your stone. You got to do your thing. 
If you want money, you've got to study money. You've got to find out how to generate wealth, how to manage wealth. If you want to get married, you're going to have to study and learn how to present yourself as husband or wife material. Do you know that there's a lot of people right now that want to be married that ain't married because they don't know how to present themselves as marriage or bowl, because there's a way to do that if that's what you want. And if you want to be married, you're going to have to present yourself as a worthwhile investment. Okay? You're going to have to present yourself. My pastor was just talking about that this morning, about how marriage is the foundation for every society and how we've gotten away from it and we need to get back to it, which is 100% right. Okay? But if you're not married and you want to be, you have to present yourself as marryable. To, to prospective people, and a whole lot of people don't know how to do that. A whole lot of people do, know not, do not know how to present themselves as marriage material. So you have to throw your stone. you got to charge up, because David ran towards Goliath. you got to charge into the battle. you got to throw your stone, and then God will give it a push, because the Lord can always do more for you than you could do for yourself. But again, the emphasis that the Lord wanted me to bring out of this message, because this story is so full of spiritual truths until, I mean, you can never exhaust everything. If you listen to all those verses I read, you can never exhaust everything in the story of David and Goliath because it is so full of stuff. But what the Lord was showing me is that God gave that stone to push. David ran towards Goliath. That means that you have to step up. You've got to step up because I'll say it again. The Lord has already opened the heavens already given you the grace and the favor, already opened the doors. God has already done it. And the Lord was telling me this morning that there are a lot of his children that are waiting on a move of God. You wait on the Lord to do something. And the Lord is saying he already did it. He already opened the door. He already made the way. It's already out there, but you're going to have to step up and kill the giant to get over there and get it. You see what I mean? And many times in our religious circles, that's the part we're not taught. That's why so many people say they're waiting on God. And a whole lot of people are not waiting on God. God is waiting on you to step up. Do you have the boldness to do like King David? Well, he wasn't king then. To do like young David and confess what you want to be and what you're going to do. Do you have the boldness to say it out loud in front of people? One. Number two, do you have the courage to charge up against the giant and take what you have in your hand, that stone, and throw it? And number three, do you have the faith to understand that if you throw that stone, God will give it the extra push that it needs to sink into the giant's forehead because David couldn't have done that on his own. And remember, David is in the middle of professional soldiers. And another principle there you want to understand is don't sit around wondering if you're qualified. Good Lord from heaven. Don't sit around and wondering if you're qualified. Okay, because some of the qualified people have been staring at a problem for 40 days and they can't beat it. Some of the qualified people, the professional soldiers, have been looking at the challenge for over a month and they haven't been able to solve it. And when you come on the scene, just like when David came on the scene, his brothers was talking that trash because can't nobody talk trash like your family. His brothers was talking that trash, like, what are you doing here? You, you nosy, you can't sit still. And David was like, what, what have I done now? I just want to know what's going on. I came to bring you some food. And once David found out what was going on, his courage kicked in. But when you get into the situation, there's going to be people there saying that, I don't know what you're doing here, and I don't know who you think you are, and you're not a professional soldier, you're not a real fill-in-the-blank. Whatever you do for a living, there's always people that are going to say, you're not a real artist. You're not a real jazz musician. You're not a real architect. You're not a real pro ball player. Whatever it is, there's going to be people there running their mouth trying to tell you that you don't count and they haven't dealt with the problem. They didn't kill Goliath, but they still going to tell you that you ain't got no business there. You got to be bold. You got to have the courage to step up and throw that stone anyway. In the midst of all that talking that people are going to be doing, trying to talk you out of your blessing, you got to have the courage to step out there and throw the stone. Because clearly they don't know what they're doing, or else Goliath would have been dead. Did you ever think about that? All the people that keep telling you that you don't know what you're talking about, and you're not a real, okay? Have they killed Goliath if they know so much? Okay? From my personal life, I'm not going to name the names, <laughs> 
if I could tell you the number of people that looked at me like I wasn't a real prophet, they gave me this look, they didn't they? They gave me that look. Like, like, uh, we don't want to be ministered to by you because, you know, we want, we want the pastor. You ain't, you know, you just a junior cheeseburger. <laughs> we want the Big Mac, and that's not you. <laughs> if I could tell you the number of people in my ministry since I've been prophesying in public, because I've been prophesying a long time, but I mean since I started my public ministry and people know me as Prophet David Taylor, if I could tell you the number of people that have looked at me like, like that, but that kind of stuff don't bother me because I know that God has called me and I know that the Spirit of God is in me. I know that the Lord is with me. And I know that it's not about the vessel. It's about what thus saith the Lord. That's what people don't understand. It's not about who you get ministered to from. Oh, I said that wrong. It's not about who ministers to you. It's not about where the word comes from. Okay? It's not about that. It's about what the Lord has to say. And you don't get to tell God what vessel he's going to use to minister. That's where people have missed so many of their blessings. Because they didn't like the vessel that God sent the message through. And, and Goliath laughed at David. King Saul said, you can't fight him. You're just a boy. His brothers laughed at David. But all the men, the professional army, they weren't able to stop Goliath. They were just trying to tell David he couldn't do it. But they couldn't do it either. So like I said, if I could tell you the number of people since, since I've been you know doing what I'm doing, prophetically, that gave me that look. <laughs> it's not about the vessel. It's not about the vessel. It's not about the vessel. It's not about who God uses. It's about what God has to say and do. Because God can use whoever he chooses. You don't get to tell God how the message and the blessing is supposed to come. One more time. You don't get to tell God how the message and the blessing is supposed to come. Okay? So I learned that you have to humble yourself. The Lord is going to do what he promised he was going to do, but it may not look like... Can I explain why you've received the same prophecy for 10 years by 10 different prophets? That's the Lord trying to give you a message. That's the Lord trying to tell you the same thing. So it just comes out of different people's mouths to let you know that's the Lord talking to you and not that person. So the thing to do is HBO, hear, believe, and obey. So that was somebody on my Periscope, for those of y'all on Facebook. So um, that's what I mean when I say that so many people have cut off their own blessings because they keep framing, framing it in their mind that it has to happen this way and it has to be by this person. And if I don't get ministered to by somebody famous, then, you know, like if you go to a big, let's say you went to a mega church, and let's say somebody in your family passed, and you say, well, the pastor is supposed to come to the hospital. But if the pastor has, you know, like, like 50,000 people, he might not be able to come, so he might send an associate minister or something like that. And a whole lot of people get offended because they don't want the associate minister. They want the pastor. <laughs> well... If someone is there to minister to you and sit with you and pray with you and comfort you in your time of need, you need to say, thank you, Jesus, that I belong to a church that cares about me in my time of grief, not you ain't the pastor, so do you see what I mean? So that's what I mean when I say these are the kind of challenges that you face in your quest to step up. You're going to face everything David faced, everything I just told you. People aren't going to believe in you. People with quote-unquote more experience are going to tell you you can't do it, but they didn't do it. <laughs> uh, you're going to have to draw on your past experience with God. God delivered me from a lion and God delivered me from a bear. So who is this guy? Okay? And you're going to have to run towards the challenge. Get that stone out and throw it. Because if you say this stone in and of itself isn't enough to do it, okay, then you cut God out of the equation. That ain't what David said. David said, this day, God's going to deliver you into my hand, and I'm going to cut your head off. Okay? 
because David had enough faith in God to know that he had to say it and then he had to do it, put some works behind his faith. And as soon as David threw that stone, the Lord's hand got behind the stone, gave it a push. And that's what made it hit Goliath's forehead enough to sink into his head and kill him. That's the same thing that happens in our lives. You might look at what you have in your hand and say, that ain't enough. You've got to throw it anyway. And you've got to believe that once you throw it, the Lord's going to put his hand behind it. And he's going to make it be enough to slay the giant. You see what I mean? If you don't do that, you're going to be just like the people that stood around and were scared of Goliath for over a month. You're going to be standing there in front of your problems, trembling like, oh, Lord, what are we going to do? Okay? Same God, same open heaven, same grace, same favor, but nothing happened. Because you're not waiting on God to do something. God's waiting on you to step up. Okay? Okay? Uh, just to tie it into the theme of the day, because today is Super Bowl Sunday. Because uh, a lot of people don't like the Patriots. They don't understand why the Patriots keep winning. You know why the Patriots keep winning? Because they never stop fighting. Have you ever seen the Patriots get down to the last two minutes of the game and give up? What the Patriots do, I mean, they don't win all the time, but they have a winning record. Do you know why? Watch how Tom Brady acts when we get under the two-minute warning and he's under pressure or if he's losing. How does he act? He gets fired up. He rises to the challenge because they never stop fighting. They're not afraid. They're not going to stop fighting. They believe they can win. They believe in miracles, and they're not going to stop until the time runs out because they got to throw the ball. They got to run the plays. You got to try because many times we've seen teams get down to the two minutes. You can see them give up. You can, and I'm not talking about taking a knee when the game is over. I'm talking about mentally you can see them just throw their shoulders up and be like, well, the Patriots never do that. Okay? So that's what I mean when I say that's how you become a winner in the kingdom. You got to deal with the persecution, the people telling you you can't do it, the qualified people. I can't stress that enough. I can't stress that enough. If you were in a situation around a bunch of skilled musicians, and they've been playing longer than you've been alive, you might be intimidated. If God told you to get up there and play that, play your instrument, play your keyboard, play your guitar, you can play three chords under the anointing that, that blows everything away. You can play FGC. FGC, and if you play FGC because you love Jesus under the anointing, then the Holy Ghost will show up and put the power of God on that music. I'm telling you. All the musicians will tell you, you don't qualify. You don't know but three chords. You ain't been playing that long. You don't have a degree in music. Gang, 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 gang. Okay? So that's what I mean when I say that's the lesson today. That you are not waiting on God. You ain't waiting on the Lord to do something. God has already opened the heavens. Already given you the grace. Already given you the favor. You got to do what David did. You got to rise to the challenge. You got to step up. You got to ignore the critics. You got to say it. You gotta you gotta have the the courage and the boldness to say what you want to do and what you want to be. Then you gotta get out there and do it and throw the stone. And when you look at them five smooth stones, you might say, "How in the world am I gonna kill a giant without a spear or a sword with some stones?" But once you throw it, the Lord is gonna put His hand, and when God puts His hand behind it, who can resist that? Can you see that? All right. So that's our lesson for today. Now, I got blessed. I got encouraged from that myself. So I hope you received that. I hope that was a blessing and an encouragement to you because I love to hear what the Holy Ghost has to say because the Holy Ghost is always so on time. He's always so on time. The Holy Ghost is always so on point. You can't even explain how on point the Holy Ghost is, okay? All right, so if you have any prayer requests, put them on the screen. Anything you want me to pray for, I'll put that up there now. And we're going to prayer. Now, like I tell you every week, when you see me close my eyes, I'm going in the spirit. I'm asking the Holy Ghost what need, what kind of physical healing needs to be prayed for and if there are any demons that need to be cast out. That's what I'm doing when I'm closing my eyes and praying in tongues. Okay? Okay, the Holy Ghost is saying somebody's forehead is hurting right now so if you're out there right now and your forehead is hurting take your right hand and put it on your forehead and say in the name of jesus christ by stripes i'm healed i command my forehead my brain my skull my blood flow to be a hundred percent whole and i command all pain to go away 
and I'm 100% healed right now. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, somebody's having trouble with their chest. Put your right hand on your chest and say, in the name of Jesus, I command my lungs to open. I command my blood to flow. I command my air to flow. And I command uh, everything in my chest cavity, my rib cage, my lung, my trachea, to be 100% whole right now in the name of Jesus because by his stripes, I am healed. Huh. See, I feel it when I do it. And you feel that breath, you feel that breath open. You feel that new life come into your chest when you say that. And I know a lot of us might need that. A lot of us in Chicago might need that after exposure to all that cold air because that really can do damage to your lungs. But if you say it just like I did it, you'll feel, because I feel it just like I said it, you'll feel the power of God begin to flow through you. Okay. It seems like Holy Ghost is saying similar things every week. The spirit that needs to be cast out is unbelief. Okay, there's somebody out there and there's a spirit of unbelief that's in your ear, on your head, in your dreams, trying to make you not believe God. So in the name of Jesus, I cast out the demon of, of unbelief. I curse you and I command you to dry up from your root. You cannot take root in the life of a believer because the demons are subject to us in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And you foul spirit of unbelief that defy the word of God. I command you to break off of their head, break off of their heart, break off of their ear, and break off of their life. And speak to them no more in the name of Jesus. Because whatever we bind on earth is bound in heaven. Whatever we loose on earth is loose in heaven. So I loose right now in the name of Jesus a spirit of faith. I loose the spirit of the boldness of David to declare what you're going to do before you do it. I loose the courage of David to run up on the giant and throw your stone. Even when everybody else said you weren't qualified, I loose a spirit of courage on you right now. You'll feel it. If you receive that, you'll feel it coming to your spirit. And this week, as you go about your life, you're going to feel a boldness. You're going to feel a level of faith. You're going to feel courage that you haven't felt before. All right? Okay, I've got a prophetic word to release. For behold, my children, I have given you the word. I have shown you how for my servant David, I gave him victory over the Philistine. I gave him victory even though his circumstances and everything about him said that that couldn't happen. But I gave him the victory through a miracle, through my mighty power, because he had the courage and the boldness and the faith to declare what he wanted, to go against his enemies and to throw his stones. So therefore, my people, I have no respect of person. And as I did it for David all those years ago, I will do it for you. So this week, my people, I command you to step up, be bold, make your declaration, charge out against your giant, and throw your stones, and I will be with you to make that stone sink into the giant's head, and you're going to cut that giant's head off with his own sword, and I will give you the victory. And everybody in your life will know that you are a Christian, that you are of Jesus the Christ, and I am your God. And beside me, there is none other, says the Spirit of the living God. Amen and amen. Well, once again, <coughs> excuse me, once again, that blessed my soul. That blessed my very soul, and that was right on time and right on point. Okay? So, uh, I want to remind you, is, again, there's a lot of information in this video. So, please like and share, but also please watch it more than one time. Because uh, I said a lot. I'm always giving you a lot of information. And I'd have nearly scratched the surface. Okay? But I want to stay on point with what the Holy Ghost wanted me to say for this week. Okay? Uh, don't forget to get on my uh, email list. I got a button on my Facebook page so you don't miss any new information when that drops. And I will be here sometime next week, uh, next Sunday, 2.30. And then I'll be here on the second Thursday, 7 o'clock. For the second part of, because uh, I do no more genies, this is like part 7 or 8. I think I'm on 8. But last time I talked about marriage. So that was marriage part 1. So next time I do no more genies is going to be marriage part two. Okay. So you don't want to miss that. All right. Thank you so much. God bless it. Those of you that tuned in live, thank you so much. You know, I appreciate your presence and your support. And those of you that are watching on the replay, God bless you. Uh, please receive everything the Lord is trying to give through the message. And uh, let me just put this little bit out there because God told me this this morning too. God showed me that what we in the body of Christ need to do is you need to get past the quirks 
of the person that's talking. Every person that ministers kind of has a way about them. They kind of have a way they do things. People will always obsess over the little details about the way you say stuff and the way you do stuff and the way you talk and I don't like it or they do like it or whatever. The Lord told me that we need to get past the quirks of the speaker and listen to the, the spirit of the message. Listen to what the Lord is saying. Don't focus so much on who he's saying it through and how they say it. Their little idiosyncrasies. Because I know I have some. Because like I tend to talk really fast sometimes. you know. So don't trip about all the stuff that you like or don't like. Or you think you need to change. Stuff like that. But hear. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Okay. That's how you receive from a minister. Not by obsessing on their clothes or you know, their, their broken English or if they, you know, mangle a word or a verb or they mispronounce something. That's what people trip on. God said, let that go and hear what the Holy Ghost is trying to say to you, even though it's coming through an imperfect, quirky vessel. And that's the way to receive more from the Lord. Okay? All right. Thank you so much for tuning in. Enjoy the rest of your day. Those of you that are watching the game, enjoy the game. Eat you some chips and salsa. I'm going to make me some chili. <laughs> God bless you, and I'll see you next week.